Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today, I'm looking at an issue many of you have been complaining about with your new third gen Ryzen processors. Recently on our Patreon exclusive Discord server, a lot of members had been asking me why their Ryzen CPU never hits the advertised maximum boost clock frequency. Initially, for the first few members who reported this problem, I thought it was probably just some kind of setup issue, maybe a bad Windows install or a dodgy BIOS version. And I thought this because all of my third gen Ryzen processors boosted as expected and had multiple cores achieve the peak operating frequency. I should also note that I've purchased multiple Ryzen 3000 series processors now, so my experiences go beyond just using AMD review samples. I had already closely monitored boost clock behavior on a few motherboards, such as the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Extreme and the Master, though admittedly they are quite high-end boards. Anyway, as more and more Patreon members started to ask me why they weren't seeing the maximum boost clock frequency with their new Ryzen 3000 series processor, I decided to investigate. I started by polling just how many Patreon members were seeing the maximum boost clock achieved, and a quick poll revealed that just 10 of the 34 people who had already purchased a new Ryzen 3000 series processor were seeing the expected boost clock behavior. This means the majority were reporting lower than expected boost clocks with 300 and 400 series boards. But I was also surprised by just how many people were complaining about this issue on new X570 motherboards. Given what I'd seen to date, I was pretty sure this wasn't an issue with the Ryzen processors, but rather the motherboards themselves. And since I have almost every X570 motherboard in existence, I thought why not install the 3800X on over a dozen boards and see how it behaves. The Ryzen 7 3800X has an advertised maximum boost clock of 4.5 GHz. Now this obviously isn't an all core clock frequency, but when executing lightly threaded workloads, the 3800X should hit 4.5 GHz, at least on one core, at some point in time. Therefore, I decided to investigate how the 3800X clocks on a wide range of motherboards when running the Cinebench R20 single threaded test three times back to back, with hardware info open reporting the maximum frequency achieved by each core. So here we see in its default, out of the box spec, but with the Corsair H115i Pro installed, the Ryzen 7 3800X went as high as 4,550 megahertz on the Aorus Extreme. So that's 50 megahertz higher than the advertised maximum boost clock frequency. Unfortunately, the Aorus Extreme was the only motherboard I tested that achieved this frequency. Still, there were two other boards which also exceeded the advertised maximum boost clock and those were the Aorus Master and oddly enough, the MSI X570A Pro. Prior to testing the budget MSI board, I had a growing concern that the third gen Ryzen CPUs only achieved the maximum boost clock on higher end premium motherboards, such as the Extreme, Master, Tai Chi, and Godlike, for example. The first mid range to entry level X570 board that I tested, which could hit 4,500 MHz, was the Gaming Edge, and shortly after that, I tested the X570A Pro and was very surprised by the 4,525 MHz result. However, roughly half of the X570 motherboards tested didn't manage to hit the 4,500 MHz single core target, and bizarrely, this included boards from ASRock, ASUS, Gigabyte, and even MSI. So this issue isn't limited to a particular brand, it's also not tied to board quality, and it also can't be the CPU. Now, we're only talking about a 1.8% difference in clock frequency between the Gigabyte Gaming X and Aorus Extreme, for example. And you could even argue that that's margin of error and maybe sometimes those boards will hit the frequency. And in the benchmarks that I ran, I didn't notice a noticeable difference. We did see up to a 3% difference for the worst boards tested, which included the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max, the MSI X570 Creation, and the Biostar Racing X570 GT. But I suspect with a little more time to mature, those boards will eventually boost correctly. What's really strange is that those two MSI boards, the Creation and Tomahawk Max, they sustained some of the highest all-core clock frequencies seen when running the Cinebench R20 multi-core test. Again, we're only talking about a 1.2% clock discrepancy between the Creation and the boards that sustained 4,175 MHz but it was still surprising to see the creation maintain a higher all-core speed given the single core result. Technically speaking though, with the exception of the three boards we just mentioned, all boards did at some point achieve 
the 3800X has advertised 4.5 gigahertz max boost frequency as it's not 4.50 gigahertz. I know that's a bit dodgy, but technically 4,466 megahertz is 4.5 gigahertz when you're round to a single decimal place. Where it gets even more wishy-washy is how often that peak frequency is achieved. And this is something DeBauer talked about soon after the third gen Ryzen release. Using an ASUS Strix motherboard, he saw the 3800X peak at 4,450 megahertz with a typical single core frequency of 4,400 megahertz. And even today, if we look at our ASUS Tough Gaming X570 Plus results, different ASUS board, but still, if we look at those results, they're very much in line with what DeBauer found over a month ago. Thing is though, if DeBauer used the MSI X570A Pro, Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master, or the Extreme, he might have found the peak frequency to be anywhere from 4,525 MHz to 4,550 MHz, with a typical operating frequency more like 4,450 MHz. Of course, I'm not saying that's his fault, it certainly isn't, but it does suggest that perhaps this is a motherboard issue rather than a CPU issue. That said, I largely agree with DeBauer. This problem has ultimately been caused by AMD. They certainly seem to be pushing things to their limits and the out of the box spec is right on the limit. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. Something else I found quite interesting was how many cores actually hit the rated max boost frequency, at least on boards that achieved 4,500 megahertz. Late last month, Tom's Hardware published a really interesting article that explored core boosting behavior, and they concluded from their findings that not all Ryzen 3000 cores are created equally, which honestly makes sense and isn't that surprising. However, their findings were still a little shocking as they found only a single core for their Ryzen 5 3600X hit AMD's advertised boost frequency. They added that AMD had confirmed some cores in the Ryzen 3000 series processors are faster than others, which is indicated in the Ryzen Master software. They recorded a 75 to 100 megahertz difference between the fastest and slowest cores, with just one core reaching the max single core boost frequency. After a little digging, it appears they used the MSI X570 Godlike for their testing, and that's important to note. This is because when I used the MSI Godlike, I found the exact same thing. Just a single core hit 4,500 MHz. However, if they'd used the Aorus Extreme, the conclusion might have been a bit different. As this time we find four of the eight cores did in fact at some point run at the advertised 4,500 MHz, and we even see two cores that went beyond that. Then we have three falling short by just 25 MHz, and the worst core falling short by 50 MHz. Additionally, boards such as the MSI X570A Pro, Gaming Edge, and the Gigabyte Aorus Master saw two cores hit 4,500 MHz. It's crazy to think that all this testing was carried out with the same CPU, cooler, and test conditions, but that was the case. Out of interest, I installed the 3800X on the ASRock AB350M Pro 4, and I deliberately used an old budget board for this test. So, using AMD's Ryzen Master software, I manually overclocked each core individually, so one at a time, to 4,500 MHz, and ran the Cinebench R20 single core test three more times. Not the most extreme stress test ever for measuring stability, but for the purpose of this test, it will do. Here I found that five of the eight cores could indeed run at 4,500 MHz. So right now, for whatever reason, it looks like the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Extreme has the boost algorithm worked out the best, and this was the case with all my Ryzen 3000 series processors. Okay, so at this point, it seems pretty clear. Not all AM4 motherboards are currently behaving in the same way, but for the most part, I do really feel like this is a non-issue, and by that I mean for the most part, we're really only talking about less than a 1% clock speed discrepancy. I'm also pretty certain AMD will claim that a 4,465 MHz single core boost for the 3800X is typical behavior and working to spec. And really it is. As for the boards that limited the 3800X to 4,375 MHz, it's clearly an issue there. It was board specific though, and nothing to do with the CPU. I don't believe those particular boards are defective. They just need some work at the BIOS level. 
At the end of the day though, I really feel it's AMD who's largely to blame for all this confusion around their new third gen Ryzen processors, and this is for a few reasons. Firstly, the release was rushed, board partners weren't ready, and even today it's clear they're still very much in catch up mode, and this is why we're seeing some boards behaving as expected, with many that aren't. I really do commend AMD for maintaining such broad platform compatibility, and I believe we do need to be a little patient in order for this to happen. But that doesn't excuse advertising the max single core boost clock higher than what you'll typically see during light workloads. It's also AMD who's responsible for confusing you guys with numerous blog posts and videos that aren't quite on the money or are just flat out wrong. One such video as an example is titled Updates to Precision Boost Overdrive for AMD Ryzen 3000 series, where Senior Technical Marketing Manager Robert Halleck explains how PBO works, or at least how AMD wishes it worked. In short, they claimed that Ryzen 3000 processors with 4.55 GHz on the box, which, which there isn't one, but they used that as their example, they claimed it could boost as high as 4.75 GHz with PBO enabled, and this was based on the premise that you had ample power delivery and cooling headroom. Well, we all know that's complete rubbish. Just hitting the frequency on the box is a rare sight, and going 200 megahertz above it with PBO enabled, well, that's quite simply not a thing. I have no idea why AMD felt the need to advertise the max boost clocks above what you're typically going to see. It's so bloody frustrating to be honest, it's so stupid, and really so unnecessary. What they print on the box really doesn't change the end result, or at least the performance you're going to see. If they'd claim the 3800X had a max boost of 4.4 GHz, again, it would still perform exactly the same, and you'd be just as interested in it, and it would sell just as well. But most crucially, AMD would have avoided all this mess. Now, you could argue that this isn't AMD's problem. The 3800X boosted as advertised on the Aorus Extreme, so the problem's caused by the board makers. But even there, the boost behavior wasn't like what we get with Intel CPUs, and this is what's also confusing Ryzen owners. Whereas the Core i9-1900K, for example, will maintain a core clock speed of 5000 MHz throughout a Cinebench R20 single core test, the 3800X jumps all over the place and rarely exceeded 4450 MHz, even on the Aorus Extreme. Now, to try and help address some of the confusion, for those of you monitoring clock speeds, you need to be aware that you're not going to see, for example, the 3800X maintain 4500 MHz for lightly threaded workloads, even on the Aorus Extreme. The 3900X, that won't typically operate at 4600 MHz either during lightly threaded workloads, and really none of the third gen Ryzen processors will typically operate at the maximum turbo boost clock speed that you see on the box when using just a single core. Based on what I've seen with the motherboards that do hit the advertised peaks, normal boost behavior during lightly threaded workloads sees all models fall short of the max boost that you see on the box by around 50 to 100 megahertz. So if you're seeing this, don't panic, don't waste your time trying to do fresh installs or work out what's going on. Your system really is performing as intended and crucially, it will be performing to the same level as my test system, and therefore you will be receiving the same level of performance shown in our reviews and our various benchmark videos. And for me, that really is the most important thing when I'm recommending these CPUs to you. For monitoring the clock speed, if you're interested in doing that, I recommend using hardware info and just leave it open for, I don't know, 10 minutes, say, use the PC as you normally would, and then check back to see the maximum reported clock speeds for each core. Alternatively, you can just run the single and multi-core Cinebench R20 tests and compare your results with ours. And if you're within two to three percent of our scores, well, then you're golden. Just make sure you don't have other applications running in the background. So close things like Steam and virus scanners and whatever else, because they can negatively impact your score. And that is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button because it was a huge amount of work. Just swapping those motherboards in alone was yeah quite a bit of labor there and then doing all the testing yeah was a bit tedious but it was something that you guys have been concerned about and as i said the patreon members were heavily requesting it so i made it happen as we say we work for you guys so if there's something you want to see happen we do our best to make it happen and on that note if you want to support our work more directly and also get access to some cool perks like our exclusive discord server where you can 
get more involved with the creation of content like this. Um, watch the uh, the monthly live streams that Tim and myself do and the Patreon Q&A. Then yeah, jump over to our Patreon page. The link's in the video description. You can sign up for as little as $1 US per month. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>